Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we're going to do a little, um, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call it. We're going to draw, we're going to, uh, words are hard. We're going to draw with ink. We're going to go right in with ink and do some ink drawings and then I think I want this half bordered up here like just halfway in. I'm going to create some little squares with washi tape. We'll see how they stick. Usually washi tape and I don't get along that well. I know it's supposed to be low tech. But come on! Stick to the page already! Alright, there. And then again down here. A little over half. Over so, what I'm thinking is I'm going to go in straight with ink. I want to put several elements on the page in each square, and I want the design to run off like outside of the square. Go ahead and just squeeze that down like that. Now, this is a piece of um. Well, I'm working in a watercolor pad. It's not my favorite watercolor paper, so I decided I'm going to do mixed media on it. I'm going to do ink and watercolor wash and get in here with, um, what other else do I want to use on this? Um, any other supplies I feel like using on this paper, because it's not the best paper in the world. It's not the worst either. It's just not my favorite. And I find it really, really, now that I've worked on paper that is um, higher end, now that I know what higher end paper will do for me, I find it difficult to go back to the student grade paper. Not that there's anything wrong with student grade paper, there's not. Alright, see when it starts doing this, I set it aside. <laughs> and I grab another roll. Um, Let's see. I can get it to do it. Do we do we want to do just two? And yeah, maybe we'll do just two big ones. And are we doing landscape or portrait? That's the other conundrum. Maybe we'll do. Yeah, we'll keep it like this. Um, I have a couple of drawings out. I'm gonna go right in with ink. I need a waterproof ink though. Mr. Went one is waterproof. That one I know is not. I need to get it back out in the living room. Um, and I would like to draw... I have my phone out and Pinterest up and... and... being Pinterest. I don't know. So that I have most... I have so much stuff on this desk right now. It's just nuts. I'll just tuck that in and set the phone in my little holder right here. Hopefully it'll stay. Okay. This is a Derwent line, line maker line pen in point .3. And for... Yeah, for this first one over here... I want to do here, here, here. These are going to be loose and sketchy. I'm not going to be too terribly worried about. I don't want it to be a, like a clean line lined in drawing. I'm not going for that. I'm going for sketchy, loose, um, kind of free form a little bit. Get our shadows in with cross hatching and hatching. And then some patterns. That. I 
have roughly, what time is it? 45 minutes to get this done. And then I have to start dinner because I'm so hungry right now. I'm making Philly cheesesteak sandwiches for, for dinner tonight. I went and got this stuff today when I was grocery shopping. It hit me last night, like I couldn't figure out what I wanted to make for dinner for tonight. My boyfriend's coming over and I don't know what I want. I don't want to cook, that's what I don't, I don't, I don't feel like cooking. And during the week, I usually have, um, like dinner's already made, it's in the fridge, it's leftovers, and if I don't feel like eating that, I can just have whatever I want. But when he comes over, I feel the need to actually like make dinner. A fresh dinner. So I have, um, I'm getting too little. I went and got the stuff to make Philly cheesesteak sandwiches for tonight. And then tomorrow I'm either making, I'll let him decide, um, mashed potatoes and meatloaf or corned beef and fixins. I don't know which one I want. I got a nice, beautiful corned beef. I love corned beef. It's been ages since I've had one. Okay. Let's get the eyeball in there. That. So that's, that's what I did this afternoon. I went ahead and did laundry. And I got, um, I'm getting way too, way too tight with this. I went ahead and did laundry and, cause I've been avoiding it for like a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. It might've been two weeks. I just really didn't feel like doing laundry like at all. That's mostly because I gotta go all the way downstairs. I gotta lug it all the way down. Four flights of stairs, lug it all the way back up. I just don't want to. <laughs> so I ignored it for a while until I got down to the point where I didn't have any underpants. That's kind of a problem. I didn't have any underwear. I didn't have any pants pants. You know, regular day pants. Um, I was down to sundresses and um, tank tops, pretty much. Nothing wrong with that, but the weather is just not there for it. So... Did laundry, finally. Did dishes, swept the kitchen, cleaned the bathroom, uh, chores. Um, we should be back on a regular work schedule for the work stuff now, so I, I'll be able to do my chores like during the day, during the week, like I normally do. I'm a clean-as-you-go kind of person, because if you clean as you go, you don't have to take an entire day out of your weekend to clean your house every weekend. We used to do that when we were young. It was just how, how it was done, you know. Gladys cleaned her house on Saturday. Mom cleaned her house on Saturday. Gladys being my grandmother. It was just a thing, a schedule. You work out a schedule for your housework day. And, um, all right. Sorry. Let's get his other crazy dark marking in right here. And it doesn't have to be like perfect because frogs, man, frogs and toads, they, they come in all the colors. Colors, patterns, ideas, different frames of mind, I'm sure. <laughs> um, But yeah, I've been really wanting to do a large frog painting and gouache. Um, and I have the guy, the, the guy, the frog that I want to do. I'll pick out the type, the coloring, um, and all of that jazz. So I just have to sit down and do it. I'm going to do that this Sunday, I think. Sunday's my art day. 
I do try to create during Saturday, but with Chris here on coming this weekend, I don't usually do a lot of art stuff when he's here. There. Alright, this this green patch kinda like that. Sorta. Of. And then this is all dark. So we're just gonna get it in. A little cross hatching. If you don't know what cross hatching is, it is just lines over lines. Now you can do them close together, you can do them far apart. Um, hatching is lines going all in one direction, like this. Cross hatching is literally going over the top, and it just creates different depth of shadow. I guess I could zoom in a little bit while I'm working on the frog. Are you going to focus? There we go. Um, He'll be in frame. And uh, it's a good way to get shadow effects in in different areas relatively quickly without having to. I don't want him to be a little beefier than that. He's going to be a beefy frog. Puffy. Buff, if you will. Maybe even a little more. Feeling that swoop right there. I want, I want, there we go. I want to have some girth. And you can cross hatch and hatch in curves. It doesn't have to be straight lines. Curves over curves. To give form. Your eye will fill in a lot of the rest of the the, the work. He's pretty shadowed back here. His rumpus is back right there. Okay. He looks like he's got a map on his body. And then there's a plant here. And his tummy is right about here. <coughs> Sweeping up. Like that. This whole section is in color. That. Oh, how's that? Yeah, that pretty good. this alone for right now because I, I need to put a plant in right here and I haven't decided how big I want it to be. <coughs> so there's a distinctive yellow line all along his marking right there. Right up to the eyeball. So I'm going to get that and darken that. Like that. Okay. I don't know if we're gonna come in and put that in, but I thought I I, I felt it. I felt the need. All right, I'm gonna come down here like this. And he's got a little fold situation happening there. He's got a little old situation happening there. Okay. And then I want to 
focus but textures not a lot I'm not gonna go for like full-on pointillism although that is a very relaxing way to do a piece of art but just for different different areas like that. Texture can convey color, <clears throat> so if you dot, do dots in one area and stripes in another, patterns and whatnot, it can convey, it, like in the place of color, and color changing, and all that, different kinds of shadows and mark making. It's fun to do. I believe it is. Like this whole part of his body is pretty well lit. Four. All right, let's put his frog. His oh, he's got another, another leg. Mark right there. Probably comes up from his tummy, right? So we'll put in the yellow line, and then we'll fill this in. Pretty dark. Like that. Okay. And then he's got his. Leg coming up, and his knee is right about there. And then this part is dark, so he's got there, and then yeah, here. About there. That dark line right there. <clears throat> I do have to put his hand in too. It'll all make sense in a minute. Right now he's just floating in the middle of the page. And although frogs do float, there are water frogs. I don't know if tree frogs go in, in the water. That'd be interesting to know. Some color in there. And frogs are highly muscular, so a lot of their musculature shows, which is a lot of what all of these dark marks are. Okay. There. And his bottom. And then his other, his other leg is, you can see it poking out over here. There. And then we have his map like markings. I love maps by the way. I think they're very interesting. My ex husband George got me into maps. We used to go up the mountains a lot and he 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 really wanted me to be the navigator, so I learned how to read terrain maps. Which is interesting. I have a, an affinity for maps. Felt the need to share, so there you go. We used to go up in the mountains all the time. Sometimes just to be up in the mountains, sometimes to camp, sometimes to hunt. If you're not a hunter, you know, don't don't get worked up. It's it's okay. It was the lifestyle we led. We ate what we hunted. Elk, deer, bear. Um, what else did he hunt? 
Well, he's Native American, so he had um, the right to hunt a lot of different animals. So we got up in the mountains quite a lot during hunting season. And it's gorgeous up there during hunting season, just before the snow falls, middle of fall. So great. One of my favorite times of year to be up in the mountains. The weather's crisp, it's a little cold in the morning. Get up and make fried potatoes and coffee and eggs. I always had all that stuff prepped too. It was all prepped and in bags and in the cooler. I didn't have to do a lot of the prep work while we were up there. That would have been exhausting. I miss doing all that stuff. Okay. This this foot is just kind of free floating out in space out here. It's not attached to a twig or anything. He's just kind of chilling. You know, like when you hang your arm off the side of the couch or off a chair or something. That kind of thing. That's what he's doing. Chillax them. And he's got different stuff happening there. Up into there. Create a nice dark line right there. So there's most of our frog, and then let's, this face is too light, too light, too white. He's got a very squiggly, mappy, now that I'm really looking at him, kind of texture to his tummy. So we can go in and put in some squiggly, mappy lines, like that. Cool. There he is. Let's put his other paw in up here. Over here. And then about here. Goes down. Little, they have these little round tips to their their little stems. And he's held onto that branch. Which is gonna go up here. Like that, and then there, and there. I'm leaving out where I'm going to put the plant like parts. That. <coughs> There's plant overlapping him right through there. So there's his little self. Let's go ahead and get in our twig. And it can be whatever you want. I'm just going up and down to get indicate that that's the direction it flows and grows. that way. And then here we have more twig coming down. Okay. And I am not going to get too wrapped up in all the inertia of what's going on with the leaves. I'm just going to block them in with pretty bold lines. Like that.
Okay guys, I had to change the battery. I went ahead and zoomed out. Because we're going to get in like all the foliage on him now. And I'm not... Really... Too concerned. page and then And then, let's get the rest of his stick in, and it can start bigger down here. that in. And there's foliage. I'm putting it back behind because it should have gone in front, but that's all right. Maybe it's back there. And then whoops. Maybe there's something coming in off the side there. There's our frog. What do you guys think? I'll zoom out a bit so you can see the whole piece. I didn't realize he was that afraid at the top. Sorry about that. There's that piece. All right, now we have about 20 minutes. Let's go back. And back. It's just another ink drawing 
I have this idea in my head that won't leave me alone to keep doing ink drawings with different elements within within the drawing and then to color only one of the elements just just one and I don't know why the idea won't leave me alone but that's what's in my head right now Well, I'm sketching in this fish dude. Okay, let's, let's really, I feel like the eye is the, it's always the main point, right? Like that, okay. And then I can go ahead and get a little less exacting. Then let's get in some of his basic shapes here, here, down a little bit. It's pretty dark through here. So we'll just do that, and then this, do that, oh, it's pretty dark through here, like that, and then what comes down, and his lower way of being down here, like that, a dark spot there, comes around like that, ish, and then here, here, like that, and then his basic, let's get his basic shape in here. Right there. Kind of right there. 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 Then this. Out. Down. And around. And then that. Like that. All right. I'm just doing half moon and circle square squiggles, just nothing, because it's a sketch, we're just getting in the gist of the situation, and let's see, his, the direction that they're mo the scales are moving on his little body, like this, all the way down. all the way back up and then he's got a section going this direction slightly bigger and then he's got some in here that are slightly bigger he's got all kinds of stuff going on man and then down here we've got rows of teensy ones so I'll just pop in a little half curve, little half circles like that. There we go. And then this section is kind of large and more prominent. So 
not going to get them all exact. That's just not, not what this is about. Let's get that feeling in. How's that? Yeah. All right. <coughs> and then over here we've got a little swirly fin situation happening. Not even sure why, but it is happening. So we're going to get it in like that. And then a little dark spot there. Or two feet off of. There we go. And then from here we've got some coming out like that and then around. And there's a I'll put a little dark spot in right here. That's good. How's he looking? Pretty awesome. All right, I agree. And then he's got. That does not have to be perfect. Why? Because it's my sketch and I say so. Overall line direction matters though. That. Okay. <clears throat> we have another. That's what this bit is here. It's a little. Through there. Like that. And down. That. There's a line right there. But that's all light right there. We'll make a little bit of dark right there. Okay. And then it comes down. And like that. And like that. And then there's... There. A little bit there. Good? Good. Okay. And then a little bit more of it comes out this way. Like that. And then kind of opens up a little bit right there. Getting too exacting. Need to loosen up a little bit. Alright, and then there's a little dark spot here where that swoops up and down. And kind of like that. Okay. 
good. Good, good. Okay. that bat. Now let's put in his, what's going on back here, which actually comes all the way down here to about there. And then from roughly here, there's a little bit there, and then it goes up and it folds in on itself and swoops out. some dark spots and then some light spots. And a nice line of dark and pull it down. There. That. Good. There. And then these. All come up and around and around like that. Now, now, now we have this guy happening. Swooping down like this. Now we've got this guy swooping in like this. Like that. And then we have sections.
Sorry, I got super quiet. This is... <laughs> This part is where you concentrate on where your lines are going and how you want this to feel. How fluid is he? How, how much tail do you want him to have? Do you, is it big and floofy and flowy? One bit into another? Another one of those pieces that I could get lost in for hours, especially doing the tail and all the scales. All right, so that's his his little that's his world, but I don't want him to just be. There's nothing else, because how boring would that be? I guess perspective, right? There we go. Alright, so we got that all done. Our, our two pieces now. What colors do we want to put in? What pops do we want to do? I think, I think, do we want to go bright? I think we want to go bright, right? So I'm grabbing my meat and palette here. Let's spritz this. I'm gonna scooch this down and set it over here. Maybe on the rag though, so that it's not so loud. Scoochy scooch, scoochy scooch. There we go. Now it's not so loud. Shh, guys. I mean, geez. Go ahead and spritz it. Wipe oh. this off. Eesh. Like that, nice and clean. And then. A fairly large brush. Let's see. Do we want to go? No. We'll go this big. This is a number 10. Round. It's a sapphire. A Princeton Summit. Sorry. Round number 10. Alright. For the fish, I'm thinking... Do we want to do the fish or do we want to do the water? I think... I think I want to do the water. Oh, I don't know what I want to do. Alright. We're just going to... We're going to spritz both. All of it. Spritz it all. And then, I'm going to go with the teal. We're going to drop in bits of color on the water. Like that. Bits of teal. Since I put a border on it, right? I mean, we want a little bit of stuff happening. But I, I don't want him to be colored in completely. There. Now we'll take more pure teal and do a little bit of swooshing around. Do we like that? That's a little too much there. And then maybe a touch of... Ooh, that's bright. Oh, that's like super dark. Indigo mixed with a bit of green.
Yeah. Are we liking this? The idea of this? Alright. That's that side. Now let I gotta be a little bit of water on him. Now, this is the kind of stuff I actually do in my sketchbooks. I play I'm very loose and scrubby and free. And I like the colors to blend and mix and be crazy on the page. A little more teal down here. Like that. Dark here and there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we want to leave it crisp like that? I think I do. I'm gonna leave it alone. All right. That's our that's our Friday fun practice. Um, kind of just getting in here and going crazy. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Get some textures on that page. I do like textures. And there we go. Let's peel off our tape and see what we got. Uh, ooh, I ripped the page. This paper is just not the best. That's alright. We don't mind. That off. And then the one down the middle. And there we go. There's our two pieces. Oh, I kind of dig them both. Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like this kind of process? Do you want to see more of this kind of art? Um, if you stayed through the whole thing, thank you. Don't forget to thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!